Okay, so we all think if anybody asks you, where is melatonin produced? It's produced in the pineal gland. But the truth is that most of the melatonin is not produced in the pineal gland. It's in extra pineal tissues. So there's a lot more extra pineal uh, produced melatonin than there is pineal. And the primary place you're going to find this is in the mitochondria. So it's in the mitochondria of just about every, it should be in every cell in the body. Uh, the receptors for melatonin are found all over the body. Melatonin is probably the most ancient molecule that we're aware of. It was there when the first organism developed, uh, at least on this planet. So this is a conserved molecule and its primary role other than what we're about to get into with the pineal gland, its primary role is as an antioxidant. And why is it in the mitochondria? Where's the bulk of the oxidative stress, but in the mitochondria? Okay, so melatonin is also important for the mitochondrion circadian rhythm. So we all know about the circadian rhythm, but there's also a mitochondria circadian rhythm, and we want that to be coordinated or synchronized with the overall body clock. So melatonin plays a big role in that. It regulates the expression of the genes. We have 37 genes in the mitochondria. We always talk about the nuclear genes. The mitochondrial genes are very, very important for health. So melatonin regulates the expression of those genes, the protein production, energy production, as well as mitochondrial biogenesis, as we'll discuss it in the next slide. And of course, it protects it from oxidative damage. So melatonin helps synchronize the mitochondrion clock with the overall clock. Okay, the HPA axis. We all know one of the problems with aging is autonomic, dysfunction, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, hyperactive sympathetic nervous, act, nervous system activity. So the pineal melatonin and it's important that I say pineal melatonin inhibits the release of corticotropin releasing hormone uh, and eventually cortisol. Uh, interestingly, it also blunts the expression of the senescence associated secretory phenotype. And so the, the interaction between the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the pineal gland is super important. Uh, and the melatonin, as we're going to discuss, coming from the pineal gland is very important for regulating this clock. So I want it very clear to everybody that extra pineal derived melatonin cannot replace or compensate for melatonin that's produced by the pineal gland. It plays no role in the sleep-wake or circadian cycle. Its primary function is as an antioxidant. So when I was researching this topic, I asked the question that you see here, why can't extra pineal derived melatonin replace or compensate for the role played by the pineal derived melatonin in terms of circadian rhythm regulation? I mean, a molecule is a molecule, and we know that the melatonin secreted by the pineal gland is the same molecule found in the rest of the body. And I believe I, I found the answer. So when melatonin is secreted by the pineal gland, it falls back in a recess just posterior to the, um, uh, to the pineal gland into the third ventricle, which is bathing the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So it's the location of melatonin that's important. And what's also been determined is the amount of melatonin that we see in the third ventricle in the area of the suprachiasmatic nucleus is many orders of magnitude higher than what we see in peripheral circulation. So again, melatonin secreted by the pineal gland is super important for this biological clock. So I'm not telling people to not take melatonin. It's a wonderful antioxidant. And if you take enough, it can help you sleep for a while but it does not replace endogenously produced melatonin from the pineal gland. So what we have to do is we have to try to keep our pineal gland functional, optimally functional. 
I want to talk a little bit about mitochondrial fission and fusion because it plays a big role in the mitochondrial circadian rhythm. So the mitochondria are a constantly changing network um, in, in which they're fusing, uh, there's, there's fusion, there's fission, and it's constantly changing depending on the needs of the cell, depending on the needs of, of, for energy production, as well as the stress that the cell is under. Melatonin promotes fusion. And the time of the day, as well as the stressors, determine whether it needs more fusion or more fission. Again, melatonin plays a great role in keeping this mitochondrial circadian rhythm working. Okay, there's also a clear relationship between the size of the pineal gland and pathological conditions. For example, the pineal gland has been shown to be smaller in primary insomnia, uh, in obesity, in Alzheimer's disease, and several cancers, and of course, prolonged stress. So the pineal gland uh, remains stable in size from like two to 20 years of age, and then it falls off in size, but then in old age, it, it's stable. But what does change is we get these calcifications, and the calcifications we can see in the parenchyma, and associated with that is decreased production of peptides and the indolamines like melatonin. And here's just a pictorial of a calcified pineal gland. And, and many of us have written it off, oh, that's normal, it's normal. Well, it may be normal, but it's not optimal. Now, the pineal gland does other things besides uh, producing peptides. So it participates in cerebral spinal fluid production, uh, recycling, filtering. Uh, most of what it produces in the pinealocytes is melatonin. Uh, but what causes pineal dysfunction with age? Well, certainly we're aware of all these diseases that we talked about, but where is it coming from? Well, calcification may play a role. What do we do about it? Once it's calcified, uh, we don't have an answer for that yet. But also, there may be decreased input from the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So keep in mind that the light hits the retina and that impulse gets transmitted to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and then that gets transmitted to the pineal gland. Okay, so different peptides secreted by the pineal gland, uh, certainly melatonin, and I'm sure you're all familiar with dimethyltryptamine or DMT. And it has been proposed that uh, people with near-death experiences hallucinate possibly because the pineal gland in near death will release large amounts of dimethyltryptamine. That, that has not been proven. Also produced from the pineal gland, serotonin and acetylserotonin, neurosteroids, testosterone, estradiol, and 7-alpha-hydroxypregnenolone, and multiple brain growth factors. Again, like the thymus, the pineal gland modulates the crosstalk between the neuroendocrine and immune systems. And melatonin, again, it directly affects the release of the thymic hormones. So these two glands are inseparable. They're very well connected.